Hey guys, I just want to let you guys know that if you want a more in-depth video on the first topic situation that only goes into that situation, I recommend watching with Cindy's video covering the topic that I'll either put somewhere on the screen or in the description. Oh, and also to Anna Marie Frasino for the second topic because I could not find the receipts anywhere and it drove me out of my mind. So when, in my research I came across her video, it, it saved my life. Please go watch her video as well for the second topic with Cindy and Anna Marie, you guys are the best. I was first introduced to this topic because of her video on the situation and she's the only reason this video is really being made in the first place because she got me thinking. She asked several questions at the end of her video to spark conversation and I like to think of this video not as like a direct response to her video but like a video you'd watch after hers. You don't have to watch it because I cover all that we need to know for the topic of this video, but I still recommend checking it out because again, it inspired this video. Okay, that was it. Anyways, bye. Content warning. Talk of sexual harassment and abuse, grooming, sexism, pedophilia, consent and lack thereof, incest, emotional incest, and one very brief mention of a book with the trigger warnings of child trafficking, child abduction, human sacrifice, sexual assault, murder, and stalking. Hey you guys, welcome to Purgatory. Purgatory. This is the third episode of Fantasy in Real Life where we talk about how fantasy in fiction does in fact affect and reflect reality because we don't live in a vacuum. My point with this series is to show that content creation is not just a silly little fun thing that you can do, but something that actually really does affect the real world, whether that be in a positive or negative way. The proof is everywhere around us. People crying over books or fanfic that they read that shook something so deep into their soul that it's changed their perspective, their outlook on life. It's opened their eyes to things they didn't understand or know about or believe before. They realize what it is they want in some part of their life. The metaphors the author was using to talk about a real world issue helped them to understand said real world issue. Or the content just made them hurt or love so badly that it moved them to tears. When we write a piece of art, such as a game, a painting, a movie, do we solely judge it based off of how good the graphics are, how good the quality is, how smooth the characters move, how the actor sounds in every scene, or are we involving our emotions? Are we also judging it based off of how it made us feel? Have you ever talked about a piece of art that you loved because it reminded you of home, of a memory, or how you're struggling in your own life? How seeing someone that looks like you in a movie made you feel better as a person for existing? How seeing a fictional character being treated right in a relationship made you realize that you deserve better? And have you thought about how even the previous judgments on quality and graphics are also rooted in emotion? Why do we want better graphics or quality? Why do we want an actor to sound a certain way in a certain scene? Is it perhaps because if they say it in an off way compared to the scene, it throws you out of it and you're not as absorbed as you previously were? Why were you absorbed? Did it make you feel something? This series is about asking ourselves questions and leaving with things to sit with and think about. There is much more that could go into this topic in particular, but today we're going to be focusing on book talk. If you don't know, book talk is the section on the app TikTok where people will create content and talk about books, books they like, don't like, that are sexual or quote unquote spicy, that are informative, just a section of the app where people talk about books. However, as with just about everything else, the main focus is romance. And who are the target audience for romantic content and literature? Women. So book talk is mainly women discussing with each other different romantic books that usually feed into the usual romantic book issues, such as pedophilia, misogyny, and everything that fits into that and more. With this new wave of women taking back their sexual agency, however, now that many people of this time are trying to create a more sex positive world where women can talk freely and openly about their sexuality without the usual misogyny, spicy books have overtaken book talk and just about every other thing that includes books. You go under the book talk tag and you prepare for a wave of women thirsting over different fictional men who usually don't treat the women very well uh, at all. And even if they do, sexual book content has taken over so much that there are people making comments, however jokingly, that non-spice shouldn't exist. And there's definitely a discussion in that about how sex obsessed and addicted people are now and how that is making the women that we're going to talk about today act the way that they do. But that would make this video a whole lot longer. So let's instead put that aside for another day and focus on the first part that we'll be talking about. The Seattle Krakens are a hockey team that have a player named Alex Wenberg. Because of his stereotypical attractiveness, book talk women were very taken by this man and decided to use him as something called a face claim. 
face claiming is basically just being like, oh, I really like this book character. I wonder what they would look like. Sees an attractive person. Oh, wow, they're hot. You know what? I bet this character looks like them. And deciding to view that fictional character looking like that person in your mind. This, of course, led to incredible thirsting online for this man. One person in which is named Kiera Lewis, and she is very well known for her excitable and enthusiastic videos on how attracted she is to Alex, a hockey player. And her behavior really called me to make this video at all because it made me start thinking, why do we think that this kind of behavior is acceptable towards real living people? Whether they might see it or not, why do you see a stranger and know nothing about them other than how they look and still act this way and think that it's okay? And sharing it because you think it's funny and want to find others that agree? Where is the line? And why is that the line? And does it really have anything to do with gender at all? Here are some examples of said behavior. already something else and way more than enough to fault her for and talk about but this is what truly made me the most uncomfortable about this situation and what had me putting off making this video in the first place because it made me so uncomfortable the thirst for alex via people on book talk got so large that the team's tiktok page not only fed into it but encouraged it by making their own videos on him and commenting on others and we have no way of knowing whether they did or didn't, but with what we know about how celebs are treated, especially by their PR and management, and considering what Alex says later on, which we will be going into, you would be a fool to believe that they checked in with Alex to see how he was feeling about this extreme sexualization and harassment online. And especially to believe that they asked for his consent before posting these videos and comments. And I know that some people will then give these book talk women, including Kiera, the benefit of the doubt, considering that the team's TikTok page literally fed into it, but these are not children. These are grown adults, grown people who are way past old enough to know better. They just don't care. They are just blinded by their own selfish desires that they will simultaneously shame men for not being able to control while doing the same online. The team's management encouraged Book Talk sexual harassment of Alex so much that they sent Kira a jersey with the name Book Talk and invited her to come to a game. They invited the sexual harasser of one of their players to a real live game in which they are participating in. They are rewarding the harasser of this player with an invitation to see their victim up close and personal. That was already bad enough, but here are the supremely uncomfortable and disgusting moments that I was previously talking about. Baby, it's a warm up time! Let's fucking go! Ah! They do it! They do it! Wait, bro! 21! Can you do some? Oh, yes, you can do some for me. The pictures don't do Wimber justice. This boy's a fucking Ken dog. I'm about to get this and fucking attention, man. I'm about to get this and fucking attention, man. I'm about to get this and fucking attention, man. I'm about to get this and fucking attention, man. I'm about to get this and fucking attention, man. I'm about to get this and fucking attention, man. I'm about
once again, I ask the question, where is the line when it comes to the sexualization of real people? And does gender even have anything to do with it? Would this be okay if Kira was a man and Alex was a woman? Would it bother you that much more if they sent a man who had been talking about how badly he wants to crack this woman's back while she's doing her job a shirt and an invitation to see her live? If this man got there and was saying things like, it's like heaven, all of these women on their knees, I fucking love it. If so, why is sexual harassment gendered to you? It would be moronic to deny that gender has to do with sexual harassment, but is said harassment dependent on gender? Do men need more harassment than women usually get in order for it to be valid? And if you say yes, how do you call yourself someone who stands against sexual abuse? Why is SA different when the victim happens to be a man? What are you going to say men can't get raped next? Talk about dehumanization. And is the issue gender or is the issue sex? Is the issue that they're a man or that they're male? And how can you talk about how bad men are as a whole because of the patriarchy and their dehumanization of women and then dehumanize them? I'm not saying that that feeling does not make sense if you are a woman who has experienced pain and suffering at the hands of men and the patriarchy. But if you want this behavior to change, do you think dehumanization helps anything? The harassment on Alex got so bad, from DMs to tagging him in nasty posts they would make about him, that his wife, yes, his wife, who he married, because she's his wife, not that this would have been fine if he was single, just really adds to it. But his wife, Felicia, made a post on her Instagram story calling out this behavior and setting boundaries. She had previously contributed to the sexualization by making jokes that I assume Alex was fine with because, you know, she's his wife, but finally the fire spiraled out of control out of everyone's hands and she decided to finally put her foot down. Unlucky for book talk, she's actually very well versed and educated in the matter of consent. However, for reasons we will go into later on, nobody took this seriously and actually took offense to Alex's wife setting boundaries on the sexual harassment he receives online. Especially Kira. And let me just say this, because it's pissing me off that I'm seeing my name being dragged on people's social medias when, bitch, I don't fucking, I keep telling y'all, I'm not the one. It's come to my attention that not even, I'm not even gonna say people or a whole group of fucking people, because the views tell the fucking opposite. It's come to my attention that a couple of fucking people aren't a fan of me saying crack my back. For one, let's get one thing fucking straight. The original saying was break my back that it pissed me off that these Facebook people want to come to TikTok and want to make us take this app seriously when the whole reason why we are on TikTok, our generation is on TikTok, is because it's an entertainment. It's the one place where we can just have fun and not really take things or take life serious. So to see my name being dragged with all these false accusations is fucking, it's blowing my mind when I was doing these reactions when back in the country streets when Luke Bryan wife would literally repost my fucking videos about him thinking it was funny. I've had other celebrities repost my reactions thinking it was funny. Their girlfriends, hell, their even moms would send them to them like, girl, she's so funny. She's talking about like how hot you are. So now to be in a conversation where people are, the same people that was literally saying, oh, my husband is the book talks panty dropper. My name is being dragged. I don't know, it's just literally pissing me the fuck off. Especially when I tell y'all all the fucking time. These 30 second, 45 second videos is just for fun. I make these videos and I go out and live my life with my friends and my family. I genuinely don't, I don't take my life seriously. And so, and to say that is like, half the people I react to, more than half of them, girl, I don't even follow them on social media. I don't keep up with their life. I genuinely don't really give a damn. And, and I damn sure don't be fucking DMing them. The, the fuck do Kiara fucking Bad Bitch Lewis look like? I don't DM these fucking people. So to see these accusations or to see people mad about me saying crack my fucking back, baby, it's TikTok. People are making a fucking salary doing AI. We don't take shit seriously. And unless you're a chiropractor, you really can't crack my back. Now, I'm going to go back. I just have to get this off my chest because, bitch, I can't talk to my therapist right now. But please, please, unless you know me, do not... Don't have me on your social media. Do not run. Don't have my mouth, my name in your fucking mouth. Because, girl, I'm not the fucking one. Like, it, it literally blows my mind. I'm like, girl, there's... We're going to leave it there. We're going to leave it there. Go back to Facebook. If y'all not like it, liking this book talk, TikTok shit, but don't try to come over here and tell us what to fucking do. Girl, it's fucking... It's jokes. And these jokes happened four or five months ago. I'm like, this is a screenshot from a video that happened earlier this year. 
Girl, I'm not the fuck. I keep, yeah, we're gonna stop it there. And then, update I just found out that I was unfollowed by the Seattle Kraken, all because someone who literally was just feeding into the whole book talk thing oh, yeah, my husband, book talk, love him, da da da. Someone who was just feeding into it now is resurfacing or now switching sides and saying, oh, because of this video four months ago, I'm not a fan. I don't like it. I don't like it. For one, like I said again, bitch. Everything well, everything that comes out of my mouth is a fucking joke. I don't follow half these people. I don't damn sure don't be on them. But what also pisses me off about, like, I've noticed with musicians and also, like, sports teams, they like to use book talk to, like, get clout, get clout, get clout. And then they'll, like, skirt to the side of them and move on to, like, the next thing. And I'm not fucking rocking with that. And, yeah, I'm pissed the fuck off. And I never, which is a rare thing for me. But, yeah, I'm pissed the fuck, fuck off. The way all of this, I've been having a good-ass fucking week, a good-ass life. Then the way this shit just blindsided me. And also for me to sit here and see that post that the woman posted to me and me being an adult and literally message her and say, hey, if you got a problem with it or whatever of a video I posted four months ago, say the word. The video is fucking deleted. Any video is deleted. I haven't even spoke of that man on my fucking page since literally since the beginning of hockey or whatever. So if you got a problem with it, just let me know. Speak to me as a woman. Didn't get no fucking response. So I'm pissed the fuck off. And what's pissing me the what's pissing me the most off about this entire situation, whether it be this Felicia chick or the Seattle Krakens themselves, for one, bitch, I'm so heartbroken because I was like, finally, for the first time, I had something that was outside of books that I fell in love with, was literally going to buy 30 people from my book club, us tickets to go see them this fall. Now, I don't even fucking know. But let's go into me being the adult and messaging Felicia Winberg yesterday when I saw her make a story about me and book talk. And what I also didn't like is her first post was about this, how she said she used to call her husband book talks, uh, panty dropper, book talk, wonka, whatever. And now she's having a change of heart. But what I found so slick was, why did you cover up this person's name? But when it came to the post about me, the next post, you literally kept my name on there trying to send whoever, you and your little goons, to come after me. And yeah, this was her, her whole slick thing. But my issue of the matter is, for you, I always say people want to ride Book Talk Hotel for the clout and then switch up. You were just calling your husband what? Book Talk what? Now you're having a change of heart? And my biggest problem of all is, why didn't you DM me? If you're posting this on your story saying your issue is in, with me, Kiara Lewis, because you didn't cover up my name, why not DM me and say, hey, I had an issue with it. You asked his wife, I wouldn't like it. Me being the chillest fucking person, I'm a Sagittarius. I literally be like, oh my God, girl, say fucking less. Let's delete the video. We good. I'll see you this October. And kept it moving. I just didn't like the way this whole thing played out. We don't take this app seriously. We just have fun here. It's just a joke. It's all, it's all games. It's not meant to be taken seriously. It's just a joke. Where have we heard this before? Being dragged with false accusations? Are the false accusations in the room with us right now? Because you don't need allegations. You posted it. You posted your own harassment of someone. Online. For fun. Can we think about how wildly insane it would be if someone said that they thought this random stranger would consent to being sexually harassed without them even having to ask because someone else previously consented to being sexualized by them? And to complain that Alex's wife previously consented to the sexualization but then changed her mind is literally complaining about how consent is something that can be taken away and how you don't like that. That you don't like that consent is something that can be given and taken away at any time for any reason. Kira learns what consent is for the first time. And to twist this whole thing around and make it about you, because your name was kind of in one of Felicia's screenshots that she shared, because you're participating in the behavior that she's talking out against, to say things like, I just wanted to get this off my chest because I can't talk to my therapist and I'm pissed off that you guys are spreading false accusations when you know I don't take life seriously. Don't have my name in your mouth. If you don't know me, don't tell me what to do. It's just a joke. You are a predator. You sexually harass this man to the death. And then when politely asked not to, and not even at you in particular, but just everyone as a whole, you make it about you, defend it, and then act like it's not even that big of a deal. How does this not make you predatory? Maybe it's time that we sit first before we lash out and think when called out for harassment. And just like I thought, Kiara states that she is heartbroken about this because she finally found something that she fell in love with and that she is the adult for messaging Felicia after her Instagram post. If you are going to make a situation public, 
do not get upset when someone responds publicly. How important do you think you are to get upset that Felicia doesn't respond to you or read your messages? Do you think you're Beyonce or something? Or that your name is automatically pinned to the top of her DMs for some reason? And speaking of her behavior and book talk in general, Kiara seems to think that she genuinely is the main character. Main character syndrome has been a thing for a while now, but many book people genuinely seem to actually, with all seriousness, be delusional. They feel and act like they are the main character and that everything has to do with them, good and bad, and that people must just be jealous of them. Are we going to talk about how while your name was slightly in one of the screenshots, as it should be because you're contributing to the problem she's talking about, someone's comment, name, and profile is in clear view for everyone to see directly on top of yours? Oh no, sorry, we're not because that wouldn't contribute to your delusion of everything being about you because you're the main character. Sorry. Speaking of main character syndrome, Kiara was not the only one upset by this and upset enough to complain about a man's wife asking you not to sexually harass her husband without consent. Okay, and as with Cindy points out, it is very clear that a very large reason that people are acting and feeling this way and behaving this way is because Felicia literally is Alex's main character. She is the main character in the story of the man who they are fawning over his romantic life and life in general. That the reality check that they aren't the main character in the situation, but Felicia is, made the jealousy boil over so much that they have to harass her just because she wants to protect her husband. As if they wouldn't be drooling if it was a man saying this about his girlfriend or wife, saying that they need a man as protective and caring as him. I don't think sexual abuse has to do with gender. I think you make it about gender. After the team's TikTok page finally took down the awful videos that they made, Felicia gives one final beautiful statement. May I also point out that if this was your boyfriend, you would be foaming at the mouth and in jail? Unfortunately, this all boils up to the last point that we never wanted to get to, but confirmed all of the thoughts that decent people were having. I assumed, like is reasonable, that Felicia is saying these things with Alex's consent and because of how he's being affected. You don't feed into his sexualization and then change your mind because of nothing. There has to be change somewhere. So reasonably, I thought this was because Alex wanted this too. This was unfortunately confirmed when Alex came out with his own statement. Alex's wife was the one who set boundaries on his sexual harassment because he was too scared to, silenced, and told not to. He was accepting the harassment because he was told he had to. So to stay safe, he had his life partner do it for him. And what do they get in return for asking for simple respect? More harassment, misogynistic attacks against his wife, harassment on photos of his family and his children. What does this story sound like to you? If I switched the genders on these people, would you be surprised? Or would you do something like, <sighs> yet another case of a woman being harassed and objectified and getting hate for simply asking for the misogyny to stop. It's so sad that her husband had to ask for it to stop in her place. She must be so scared and that's why he's doing it for her. What a good husband protecting his wife. It seems that a lot of women have this idea of, because you've done so much to me, because you men as a whole have hurt me so much through the patriarchy and internalized misogyny, I deserve this. I deserve to sexually harass you because men as a whole have done it to me before and it hurts. I am a woman, the most sexually harassed and abused and by your group of people, so it is okay when I sexually harass. Because when a woman does it, it isn't sexual harassment because it doesn't hold the same weight as it would if you are the one doing it. Therefore, I am owed this. You are not. It is a very popular belief in general now, as is clear on literally all groups of the internet. This was a very straight example, but go check the comments on literally any thirst trap of a woman on, say, TikTok and see how many women are in the comments saying, quote unquote, I am no better than a man and that saying is cute and funny. And teehee, I'm just a little harmless girl, don't mind me, I can't cause any harm because I'm just a girl. Which is just infantilizing yourself and all other women by saying that you can't be abusive because you're a woman and have faced oppression. The group that should get not wanting sexual harassment the most, what it does to you as a person, how it changes your brain chemistry, does it right back because they see themselves as owed this, even though these aren't even the specific men that hurt them. And it's easy for us to treat celebrities this way, as other, as separate from us, when we dehumanize them so much because we see them as fictional characters. They are more untouchable than others. They are more sought after. They are wanted the most. They are literally living the lives that we read about in fictional media. And we only really ever see them online. 
we hear about them. They could technically be like really good AI and we just wouldn't know. We see their glamorized lives and how unnaturally beautiful they look. See the power that they have and associate them with fictional, with being godlike. No matter what, they are dehumanized. They aren't real, so what's the harm in not giving them real human respect? It's not like they're gonna see it, right? When they're so high and I'm so low, when we're just mere mortals compared to them, why would they see what I have to say? And if they did, then who cares? They're not real. With all of that sadness out of the way and over with, it is time to move on to our next talking point. What do we think of when we think of a man riding a motorcycle? A bad boy who's hot and sexy and probably flips his hair or has very short hair, being cool and mysterious and smirks a lot, and doesn't know any color other than black. Like think about if Geralt lived in modern times. He'd have a motorcycle for sure. If you've ever been on book talk, you will quickly come to realize that the majority have a type. It's possessive aggressive, but not to her. Predatory, tart, tark? Predatory, tall, dark, handsome, cool, suave, Eurocentrically handsome white man, AKA bad boys. So naturally they would love the bad boy has a motorcycle trope. However, because we can never have anything nice. Once the women on book talk really came to realize their taste for this trope and this kind of man, because they're on TikTok looking for similar content, they came across real motorcyclists who were just filming about their motorcycles and promptly decided to ruin it. Book talk women are going onto real motorcyclist pages and commenting the most despicable things you could ever say to another person without consent, without asking, and without care. Some men do play into it, but then that sparks a whole new discussion about why. Are we thinking to ask if perhaps the reason they enjoy this tension to begin with is because they're taught to do so? That they're taught to get more bitches and be sex-oriented beings? The exact rhetoric that makes people believe that men can't be raped? Because they always wanted it, right? Consent doesn't have to do with men because they should never not want it. They could never take back consent because they're sex-obsessed, right? Are we thinking about how maybe they feed into it because they don't realize that they deserve better as human beings? That they themselves maybe believe that speaking out against this is wrong because they should enjoy it? That there's something wrong with them for not enjoying it? Are we thinking about literally any of this before we decide to do what we condemn men for doing? The issue with not asking and or looking for consent before sexualizing people online is that you are not doing any kind of research into that person. You are just intruding into their space, welcoming yourself into their space, and then telling them the explicit things you would do to them or that you wish they'd do to you. Which isn't that the exact thing that we as women have come out and condemned men for doing online? calling it harassment and misogyny because it's the sexualization of just a woman existing online. Once again, I ask you, why is harassment different when the victim is a man? You are welcoming yourself into their space and harassing them without any prior research or respect. And that leads to a lot of issues such as consent issues, sexism, bullying, age. In Book Talk's hunt of tracking down and thirsting over every male motorcyclist on TikTok, they came across someone named Jesse who, like most motorcyclists on TikTok, wears a helmet to disguise his identity and talks about his bike. One day he makes a post joking about how people will say, you probably get so many girls with your bike because of the love for bad boys, but that only 17% of his audience is female. So no, he doesn't get so many girls. Unfortunately, this was just enough traction that people were literally commenting things like, it's because Book Talk hasn't found you yet, prompting him to make an, a video response to one of those comments, asking what Book Talk is and holding up some of his books that he presumably enjoys, such as The Hunger Games, leading to TikTok finally finding him. Dozens of comments at least were posted on this video by women saying things like, he's so precious, he's so pure, he's still innocent guys, he's not corrupted yet, protect his innocence, you're so adorable, you must be protected, he's still a baby. What then proceeds is actually worse than grown middle-aged women, sexualizing him, harassing him, and then infantilizing him, so please do keep the previous trigger warnings in mind. Book talk women then decide to send him book recommendations that are popular in the book talk community, such as a book called Haunting Adeline. If you don't know, this book is unfortunately very well loved on book talk. And it is unfortunate because all that I have to do to get you to understand is to read the book's trigger warnings. Trigger warning, stalking, murder, off page, sexual assault, on page, in detail, child trafficking, child abduction. Haunting Adeline is a very dark and disturbing romance where the male main character is a stalker. 
dark and disturbing romance where the main character is a stalker. Trigger warning. This book ends on a cliffhanger. It is a dark romance that contains graphic violence, dub slash non-con, and deals with a subject matter such as child trafficking and human sacrifice. If you have any triggers at all, this may not be the story for you. And I would just love to go into how people have created the term non-con and dub con because they can't get themselves to say rape because they don't see it as the same and they, and they don't wanna put people off. <sighs> but this video is probably already long enough. I'm gonna say, I don't think it's ever appropriate to enjoy this kind of content. If a man was online talking about how much he loved this book, would that not be terrifying? That a man is enjoying a book in which the woman is abused, raped, assaulted, children are being abducted and trafficked. Enjoying a book that is about sexualizing rape, like that's the whole point, is the sexualization of that. Happily enjoying that. If that wasn't the point, they wouldn't call it a romance. That is not only a massive red flag to say the least, but makes you terrifying and dangerous to be around. There is a reason for everything that we do and say and believe and think, some excusable and some not. And there is a reason why you enjoy this glorification of a woman being raped and abused and child being trafficked. That is something you should drop everything to go to therapy for if you're going to continue being around the public. So as you can tell, I do not think that that is ever an appropriate book to recommend someone. Even if it's someone who typically likes these things, without consent, that's not something you send to someone without previously asking. Or at all. Going onto a stranger's page, sexualizing them, infantilizing them, and then sending them a book with this subject matter is literally proving my point as to why you need help and to go to therapy if you're going to continue being around other people. Because you will hurt others if you don't. Look, here's the harm. This is the harm. Right here. Do you know why we do research and ask for consent before sexualizing a random online stranger? Such as a lack of desire to be sexualized, trauma for being sexualized that you don't know about, the person being 16. That would be pretty bad to miss, wouldn't it? <laughs> After Botox found him, it blew up online that Jesse turned out to be a whole whopping 16 years of age. Hmm, it's almost like you shouldn't talk about how much you wanna spread your legs and get railed until the headboard breaks by this complete random online stranger where they're just talking about motorcycles. But to be honest, it likely doesn't matter to them at all because we are finally learning how prevalent, and I fucking love this because I've always been talking about this and I've never seen anyone else do it until recently. Emotional incest and straight up unrecognized incest is when it comes to a frankly, extremely large number of women and their sons. We see how many women love being cougars and being with younger men, usually as young as legally possible. While women of all demographics were saying things to this poor boy, older women who read smutty books have a reputation for being creepy around young boys and they show it here. Jesse ended up coming out and saying, I'm 16, I honestly don't see what the problem is. If nobody says anything mad weird, then we good. So far it's just been jokes and I think it's been pretty clear. Congratulations, you have finally reached the male version of being groomed when you're a teenager by a random older woman. This is how we raise the men today who believe that men can't be raped. That the sexualization of the male body, both boy and man, is okay because they always want only one thing and at any time. This is how you protect the groomers and abusers of little boys and keep the victims silent when they're being abused by older women, such as their teacher or a babysitter. Because you tell them that they're just that good, that it's desirable to be with an older woman as young as possible because that means that you're just that good. You just have that riz. Why men will say, every boy wants that. That's every boy's dream. We can't be assaulted because we always want it. You are raising little children, babies, to believe that their consent does not matter and will not ever matter because they don't get the privilege of it. Simply because they were born with a penis. Therefore, any assault you receive is okay and not a problem and don't say anything about it unless you wanna brag about it because it's not anything other than good. And if you don't enjoy it, man up. You speak up about how men essay women so much to the point where every woman, every femme presenting person, every AFAB person is sexually assaulted in at least one way, at least one time in their life. You say that you hate men and that's why you read books, why you read fictional men, because at least they care about consent because real men don't. And then you contribute to teaching them when they are children that consent doesn't exist. But they're just supposed to magically know and understand that women's consent exists and is valid though that in a world that is already heavily, extremely misogynistic, where every woman, every AFAB person, every femme presenting person is assaulted at least once in their life, where everyone has internalized misogyny, where patriarchy is in every facet of our lives, you teach little growing boys that consent doesn't exist for them. 
don't educate them at all on what consent is, at least for women, and then get surprised and upset when between their consent being stripped away from them and being influenced by at least the outside world misogynistically, they grow into men that don't know what consent is and abuse women because of it. Back to Jesse consenting to the harassment and infantilization. I think we know this, but just a refresher, children cannot consent to sexual activity with adults or people who are not extremely close to their age in certain situations. Why? Because they don't know what consent is or how it works in both ways for themselves and for the other person. What grooming is, what pedophiles truly are, why they seek out children, why that's wrong, why sex can be so serious, and because their brains are not fully developed. They don't have the capability of truly understanding all of that yet. Physically, it's not their fault, it's just how their bodies work. Now you throw in all the awful shit we teach boys and girls growing up, and now they definitely won't understand, even when their brains are fully formed. Much less before. Jesse does not understand why this is so predatory and seriously deranged and dangerous, yet if ever. In fact, not realizing in any way that this is bad and that these are mad weird comments is a red flag of his understanding of consent, children, predators, and what is safe. And honestly, I'm tired of people always saying that it's just a small minority always doing these things. It is the majority. It doesn't affect the literal entire planet just because a small minority of people are saying and doing these things. The majority of people, yes, you, have likely contributed to this in some way, shape, or form. This is why we check in with ourselves, why we check in with our beliefs. This is why we ask ourselves why these are our beliefs. This is why we let other people challenge our beliefs and thoughts and actions. This is why we ask questions. This is why we check other people, why we allow ourselves to be checked. This is why we never ever stop questioning the things that we believe in and letting them and ourselves be challenged. So that we can be decent people. Because in a world where we only have one group of people like us, humans, who can understand one another, what is the point in not coming together and forming community? What is the point in struggling physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually just because we want to be selfish? And think about why it is you want to be selfish. Do you think you would want to be selfish if you lived in community? Why would we want a world in which everyone is selfish and doesn't want to help anyone else? You wouldn't have any of the things that you do today without community, without care. Community is what keeps us alive and healthy. Care is what keeps us alive and healthy. In a world where everyone cares for the well-being of others, peace is possible. Will we ever achieve it? No. With the amount of things that we as humans have done up to this point, there is no chance in getting even the majority of people to want to care for others. Racism will always exist, misogyny will always exist. These things will always be here now. But if you want a truly, genuinely better world, you will strive to be someone who wants community, cares for others, and does their best to tell others why they should want that too. Can you change their mind? No, only they can do that. But we can't make truly good decisions without education. Give them the education and wait and see what they decide to do with it. Unless you just want chaos, war, and pain, of course, in which everything that I just said cycles back around. In a new age of sexual liberation and positivity, we need to pay more attention to consent now than we ever have if we want to make sure that we don't circle all the way back around to how we were before. If you go too far in one direction, you will circle all the way back around until you once again meet the whole reason you went in that direction in the first place, except the reason will have become you. Going too far one way is how you become what you hate. Maybe a little different, but ultimately the same. Question yourself. Question others. Allow yourself to be wrong so that you can learn to be right. And take care of yourself as well as others so that this world isn't as bad as it could be. I know this was heavy subject matter, so check in with yourselves and ask yourself if there is anything that you need. Water, medication, food, sleep, rest, a break, work. And remember that this is a discussion, yes, but just that. Don't go around in the comments being an overall dick just because you're upset, as I am also guilty of, because it won't get us anywhere. Thank you so much for listening and watching this video, and I hope you learned something. If you like this video or any of my content, then make sure to subscribe um, if you are subscribed, and if you're not subscribed. Like this video if, if you liked the video, and if you didn't like the video, because the dislike button doesn't exist. If you made it to this part of the video, comment a heart emoji in three colors of your choice. And remember, always free Palestine. And free Palestine means free Congo. It means free, it means this is what it means, always. We are not free until we are all free. But do remember to be a good person and not a bad one, obviously, because it is the one rule of this kingdom, the one law of this kingdom. It's really not that hard.
And also remember that I will not see you, but you will see me next time again, because of course, that's how videos work. I washed the hat and it fits better on my head now. Anyways, love you guys, bye. <laughs> it's gonna be really funny to watch. Predatory, Tark, Tark, break. I can't do this anymore. I'm done. I'm done. I cannot do this anymore. I cannot do this anymore. My back hurts. I am tired. This was supposed. I'm so tired. I hope people watch this video so bad.